statements such as Asian males, two Asian males. That would make me very uncomfortable if I were a Hindu or a Sikh or a Japanese or a Chinese or a Zoroastrian or a Buddhist or a Christian Asian. Why can't they be more specific? They're being quite racist by using such a broad statement such as Asian. I'm trying to hang them by their own petard. I think the only way we're going to win this culture war is take the left's own usage of the language or abuse of the language and use it back on them. So I would say they're being quite racist in lumping in all Asian groups when it might be a very specific Asian group that they're looking for. Moreover, if they were really looking for a specific Asian group in this stabbing, wouldn't they identify it a little more clearly? I mean, I could generalize it and say... Uh, and then you're going to say, I said something against Asians, which I'm not doing. But let's say uh, a man is bitten by a certain species of animal. Wouldn't you want to be more specific of what uh, species it was? What breed within that species? Say a person's bitten by a dog. And I'm not comparing any people to dogs. But let's say a person is bitten by a pack of five dogs. And the police say, anyone having any information about dogs, please call us. Well, do they mean a poodle? Do they mean a pit bull? Do they mean a St. Bernard? Do they mean... Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm a trained biologist, so I mean, I'm, I'm into genus and species. So I'd like to know what they mean by what species of Asian they're talking about. Maybe we can help the Sacramento police crack this case. Wouldn't you think? WGDJ Radio in New York. Welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your opinion on this stabbing in Sacramento of the American train hero? Michael, it's retaliation for his uh, overthrowing the Muslim terrorist on the train. Well, hold, hold on. That, hold it. That's what you think, and that's what many of us initially thought. But we don't know who did it. All we hear is Asian males did it. Well, Michael, the parallel between what happened to him and this week in Jerusalem alone, three Jews were stabbed. Just like the Democrats send out talking points, the terrorists must send out uh, attack points every week. This week it's knives. Next week it'll be guns or it'll be bombs or whatever. But the fact that he was stabbed just like the Jews in Jerusalem were... Oh, hold, hold it. I understand you're, you're wanting to um, lobby about Arabs stabbing Jews in Jerusalem. It's a serious story, but it has nothing to do with this story. I don't know why you're lumping it together. Well, I mean, it's, it's just fascinating. And don't the police or doesn't the government think that once this guy recovers, he's going to be able to tell them what actually happened? They don't think that far. I don't think he's the only one who knows what happened. I would think that the bartender knows what happened. I would think the girl with him knows what happened. I would think the other people who were in his group know who did it. But none of them are being able uh, to be interviewed right now. They're afraid or they're being told to shut up. I think they better all get good lawyers and find some place to hide because if if Obama... Let me, let me tell you something. The news cover-up in California is worse than anywhere in the United States of America. There was an incident last week of a mayor of a major city in Concord, California, who was who they said threw himself off a roof. Did you hear anything about that story? No, I didn't. Well, there's a little uh, related story to that that I saw in the news that nobody will cover. The mayor of Concord, California, threw himself off a roof. Uh, he had been accused of bribery with regard to appointing a contract for the conversion of the Concord Naval Air Station, the old weapons depot, into a, a real estate development for certain people. And now he's found a, a dead, thrown off a roof, or fell off a roof. Nobody will publish that story. So California now is in the lock grip of a one-party system. We are worse than a banana republic right now. And this is what happens when you have a dictatorship. That's why it's not good for a healthy democracy to have a dictatorship of one party, whether it be in the White House or in a state house. And it's worse, by the way, when you add a government media complex that's all one and the same, where everybody is given only, where everybody gives out the same garbage to the people. That's a, something that would occur in Cuba. And now it's occurring in California. So all you liberals and you progressives who think it's a wonderful thing that you control the state should think carefully because you've now created a dictatorship. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is The Savage Nation. Look, I'm going to drop this topic in a few minutes unless the callers have something unique, interesting to say. I think we've covered it. I'm not going to move on to politics as usual, if not McCarthy, then who? Who cares about McCarthy? Do you? You really should care about the House Speaker, who's going to replace Boehner? The worst nightmare here is that there's such division that that drunk becomes the speaker, that stays on as Speaker. Yeah, the drunk could stay on. Clink could be there for a while yet. Uh, why McCarthy dropped out? Probably he was pressured by real conservatives. Train hero stabbed, Spencer Stone listed in a stable condition. Who did it? We don't know because the police will only say Asian males. We've been covering that for an hour. There's a big story that I can't really do, but I will just touch on it. The Queen of Ivory, one of the worst people in the history of humanity, a Chinese woman, a Chinese national, yes, she's Chinese, who was in ch the head of a crime syndicate that hunted down elephants and killed them while they were alive, taking off their tusks. Screaming and crying, they ripped the tusks off them. Chinese national Yang Feng Yang, known as the Ivory Queen in Tanzania, who masterminded a huge poaching and smuggling ring, center of a trade that has seen more than 500,000 noble elephants killed in recent de decades. Yang Feng Glan, the Chinese woman dubbed the Queen of Ivory, was arrested in Tanzania after a special task force from the nation's National and Transnational Serious Crimes Investigation Unit stalked her for a year as she shuttled between Beijing, Uganda, and Tanzania, selling the tusks. My only hope here is that they defang her while she's alive. You know the UN is going to step in and try to cover up for her. You know that there's a good, 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 good possibility that some of the corrupt bums at the UN are benefiting and have been benefiting from the ivory trade. You know it. You know it. At least they got the head of it. The poor elephants are almost extinct right now because of vermin like her. And where is this uh, uh, ivory sold? Amongst bourgeoisie in Asia. They have to have a piece of ivory to show how rich they are. How pathetic. Is it not pathetic? So that's a story. I covered it. It's on my website. You can see a picture of the doll. But there's nothing more that I can say about it. The Elephant Action League says it's a very important arrest. The most important in Africa in the past years. But I want to go back to the French hero. We're trying to find out who, they, who they're covering up for. Then you've got the hospital bombing in Afghanistan. Apparently Obama apologized for the hospital bombing. And his spokesmouth, the Goebbels of our time, Josh Disernest, Josh Disernest said that the president apologized for the hospital bombing. But we don't actually have the tape of Obama apologizing for the hospital bombing. We realize it's a collateral damage situation. Nobody would say that uh, our men intended to bomb a hospital in Afghanistan. And we also know that the enemy hides in hospitals. I mean, make no mistake about it. They're very clever. They hide behind women, children, and hospitals. That's a given. Mosques are their favorite hiding place. In fact, reports are coming out of Syria right now that the brave jihadis who were raping eight-year-olds uh, before the Russians finally started bombing them, the brave jihadis who were raping just a week ago are now hiding in mosques. I'm sure Obama will give them asylum as soon as he can and bring them in with the other refugees and resettle them in uh, largely Christian communities. 855-472, Spencer Stone update. The assailant pulled out a knife and stabbed the man multiple times, said Officer Tracy Trapani. Police officer said there's no motive. It appears to be a random deal. Geniuses in the Sacramento Police Department said alcohol appeared to be involved. Well, there you go, right there. It's not terrorism related, it's alcohol related. And so therefore you have to ban alcohol. Absolutely have to ban alcohol. Officer Trapani said the man was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. Officer Trapani said detectives are actively investigating, but police have not released any new information about the Asian suspects. Really? Officer Tracy Trapani, okay. 
Let's move on. Rob on WABC, what do you think is uh, really behind this story? Hey, Doc, how are you? Um, my question to you is, coincidence, First, the first American hero was supposed to be in that college in Oregon. Right. The college gets shot up. Now this, but wait, now, hold on. But, 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 but the shooter in that Oregon college was a deranged, sex-starved uh, Asperger's job. Nothing related to terrorism. A, a <laughs> horny freak. A horny freak with guns. I'm sorry, go ahead, Doc. No, I just said it like it is. It had nothing to do with terrorism in a, the Oregon shooting. What does that have to do with terrorism? They're not keeping that from us. One of your callers earlier question, uh, said something about uh, street gangs. Now, just a couple of days ago, they came out about uh, ISIS put a, a uh, call for Lone Wolf to take out Rob O'Neill, who killed Bin Laden. Have they called to take out these gentlemen, too? I mean, what better people to pick up contracts than street gangs? Maybe they were stalking. Oh, okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see. So they may not have been Middle Easterners who did this, but they could be looking for the reward from our Middle Eastern friends. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, if there's, if there's contacts out there, and, and where, where are you going to go to have violent acts committed? You're going to find the street gangs. And you're going to pay them mightily oh. to, to take care of business for them. Ah. Well, we wouldn't hear that from the FBI, DHS. Uh, no, no, no. They're busy looking into returning military veterans and abortion opposers. Yeah, what well, are they going to do? Very, very clever. Okay, then you're smart enough to read Government Zero. It's not for everyone. I'll send you a copy. It'll be out in a few weeks. I'm sure you'll be able to get through the book and look at the references. And you'll see what's going on and what they're doing to this country. It's funny, one of the chapters, which I'm not going to even read, is called Zero Policing. It's unbelievable. Government zero, zero leadership, zero strategy against ISIS. Yeah. Zero military, zero education, zero culture, zero immigration, zero religion, Lenin's Pope. Zero science, zero business sense, zero liberty. And there is, I swear to God, your old sage, Michael Savage, the chapter 12, zero police. Obama's endgame, a national police force. Chapter 13, saving a nation with nationalism. Ooh, nationalism. See, they confuse fascism with nationalism or Nazism with nationalism, and that's how they've neutralized your love of country. Yeah, that's how they do it. First, they get the language. And by controlling the language, they can control you. So they say Asian without describing who. So you don't know who it is. You figure it's a, a cook came out of a Chinese restaurant. But it wasn't a Chinese cook. But a sushi chef did this? Five sushi chefs did, did it? What, five Zoroastrians came out of a church and did this? Five Sikhs came out off a rice field and did this? Of course not. But this is the kind of control of language that I'm talking about. And I think it's time that we stood up to the racism inherent in the liberal culture where they use a phrase such as Asian without being more specific because it tends to, shall I say, sully the reputation of all ethnic groups who happen to be Asian. I think we have to hang them by their own petard. Okay, KCMO. Kevin, you have an interesting point. Line eight. Go ahead, fire away. Hey, Mike. It's a pleasure to speak to you. Um... The first thing that stood out to me when the press release was read right away was the police were automatically uh, discounting what it was, what it wasn't. Uh, oh, it's not Muslim related. It's not that you haven't even talked to the suspects yet, but you're going to tell us already what it wasn't. How can you do that? Every press release I've ever heard a law enforcement give on a investigation in progress is the, the big phrase I've always heard is, we're not eliminating any possibilities. We're not eliminating any possibilities. But yes, but you know this government is in bed with the radical Islamists to the extent that they'll never even call them that. Without even knowing who did it, we know that if they had done it, they're going to not tell us they did it, unless they're forced to tell us. Well, and that's, that's what stood out to me, was, wait a minute, you're going to automatically eliminate radical Islamists before you even know who these people are that did well, it. Again, let's not rush to judgment. The Sacramento police did not say they were not jihadists. They said they were Asians. Now, Asian could include Middle Easterners by the definitions being used by the uh, liberal elites today. Absolutely. I mean, Asian to me means everything from 
the Korean Peninsula to Western Asia, which includes India and Pakistan.